Hello everyone and welcome to my top 10 favorite shows. So this is going to be a two-parter uh, show because, you know, my laptop's small and I'm not going to have enough room to uh, do these, to do a full top 10 because this is already going to be an 18-minute video. So the second half, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1 will be its own separate video probably in uh, the next day. Um, I usually do these kind of top 10 things with Donnie, but since this isn't really a video game and he doesn't really watch much TV, I'm doing this one on my own. So, coming in at number 10 is Dragon Ball Z, and I know I'm using the Dragon Ball Z Kai uh, trailer in the background, but I just think it looks nicer, you know? I grew up with this show as a special place in my heart. I especially like Dragon Ball, but Dragon Ball Z just has that nostalgia for me, and um... I still watch it today. It's um, one of my favorite shows, as you can see. Um, I love watching it. I love what it, um, I loved playing in my room by myself and trying to do the Kamehameha and, you know, just thinking, what if I actually could do this? And, you know, the great thing about Goku is that, um, is it, sorry, is that he, you know, he works for everything he gets. Unlike Superman, he works hard for everything he has achieved. He deserves everything that he's given. He has a family that loves him. He's super powerful. He's got the best friend, Vegeta. Well, at least by the end of the series. Uh, if you have not seen the show yet, it's a long one, so I understand if you can. There's a new... This show is so popular, it has spanned four... Four series and countless movies. There's Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Ball GT, which I like a lot. And then Dragon Ball Super, which came out like, what, 14 years later or something like that? After, you know, Dragon Ball GT flopped? Or at least a lot of people thought it did? I don't know, man. It has to be a pretty popular show with a pretty popular fan base to still be continuing to this day. It is one of the best shows you can watch, even if you don't like anime. It's a really good show. Although the show does have the longest five minutes in the universe. You know what I talk about if you've seen the show. But yeah, overall, I'm really glad I watched this growing up. I think it really helped shape me as a kid. I know that sounds weird because it's aliens fighting other aliens. I don't know. I just think it helped shape me for who I am today. Uh, it truly is a... Wonderful Marvel show is great. I highly suggest you check it out. And yeah, Dragon Ball Z for the win, everyone. And make sure to go check out Dragon Ball Super if you can. I hear it's not as good, but still, it's Dragon Ball, so you gotta check it out just because. Moving on to the countdown, we'll be moving on to other super people. who are probably gonna take Goku down, but they're just as cool and as important. Anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Hello everyone and welcome to my number 9 which is Legends of Tomorrow. So already this took place at number 9 because it is not um, as special as the other shows that this is based off of, of course, because it is a spin-off. Now, the reason this gets stuck at number 9 is because season 1 had a lot of errors. It was really... the villain was meh. The story was good but there was a lot of plot holes that needed fixing that just did not get fixing um hawk hawkeye hawkeye or not hawkeye that's that's marvel um hawkman and hawk girl were terrible they were awful parts of the story so i'm so glad that they are gone because they were horrible season one didn't really know where to go with itself it was a fun season it had snart in it so that made it worth watching but, um, overall, it just had a lot of fixing up to do, and it just didn't. But Season 2 has been remarkably superior in every way, shape, and form to its first season. It has the greatest villains from all the other shows on this show to be on it, which is pretty incredible. Um, the crossover was also incredible. But it has the reverse flash, it has Damien Dark, it has Malcolm Merlin, and I hear, I'm not sure about this, but Snart is supposed to be on it. Season 2 has been remarkably superior in every way, shape, and form, and I cannot wait 
for season three of Legends of Tomorrow as well. Hell, stop Legends of Tomorrow and do Young Justice. I don't care. I love this show. It's awesome. But like I said, because of the flaws in season one, I have to keep it at number nine. It could be higher, but because of its flaws, it's number nine. It is still a great show that you should check out the first chance you get. Um, it truly is great. Along with all the other shows, like Supergirl, Arrow, The Flash. Hell, oh, even Smallville is pretty cool. I've seen a little bit of Smallville, and it's kind of an older show that doesn't really rely on this very much, so you don't have to watch Smallville to get what's going on here, but it's still very only, I think, only Superman story I've really liked, besides the one in Supergirl. But yeah, I just want you all to say, guys, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you at the next countdown for number eight, and I'll see you there. Hello, everyone, and welcome to my number eight. Now, this is Avatar The Last Airbender. Everything about the show is amazing. The lore it brings up, the, um, the freaking special, like, the way that they purposely got actual, like, martial arts movements to be used in the show. The acting is, the voice acting is superb for a kid show. Because you gotta remember, this aired on Nickelodeon. This is not an anime. This was made specifically for Nickelodeon. And seeing with the things that we have on Nickelodeon today, I'm very surprised this got made. Avatar The Last Airbender is some of the best animation I've seen in like a lot of shows. And it is, and story is so good for a kid show. And it deals with topics that are so good for kids. And it doesn't beat you over the head with, with lessons or anything. It just is a good show. Um, adults and kids would enjoy this very, very much. It is a good, good show. Now, honestly, this could have been my number one. But I decided to put it at number eight. Because there's just shows that I like more, I feel. I love the show, and I don't really see any faults with it. Except for a couple filler episodes in season one. Other than that, the show is amazing, and I highly suggest anyone who might be the slightest bit interested... To get, like, you can get all three DVDs for, like, under 20 bucks. It's worth it. Get it. But, um, yeah, this could have been my number one, but I just felt there were shows I liked more. I love this show. I don't really have any flaws to really talk about on the show. It's overall a fantastic show, and I'm glad I watched it. And yeah, moving on to number seven on our next countdown. Uh, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Like the video, give a thumbs up. Sharing helps out a ton. Also, Legends of Korra is a great spin-off to Avatar. And if you have not seen it, go check out Avatar or uh, uh, Legends of Korra because that is really cool. It is, a, it is a really good spinoff. Anyway, see you next time. Welcome to number seven, and this is Boy Meets World. Now this, I grew up with it. I didn't grow up with this, but uh, my dad had like a bunch of DVDs, so I watched it when I was younger. This show is so incredible. The morals it teaches in the show are really cool, and it is a sitcom, but there are a bunch of serious moments in this show. It is just some of the best... I love the show. It is so good. I love it to death. It is one of my favorite shows, as you can see. It's on my top ten. It is just so, so good. I love it. I love it so much. Um, um, you know, all the main characters are really cool. The teachers always have, like, you know, their wisdom to teach. I mean, the show must have been cool. Because it ran, like... A lot of seasons. And the show, it was cool to see him grow up and see where he went. Japanga and Corey's relationship was like the core of it, and it was so good because it's so believable. It's just so good. Everything about it is just amazing. I love it. It's amazing. It, like, jeez, there's so many good shows in the world, but this, I don't know, this just. It shaped me. It shaped me, I feel. Growing up, it really helped me. 
yeah, I don't know, I don't know how to explain it, um, but yeah, this show was a, a really big, uh, impact on my life, and it was really cool, and yeah, I don't know what else to really say, um, I mean, this show is so popular that it went so many years with the show being over, but because the fans enjoyed it so much, it got a spin-off series like 14 years later about Girl Meets World on Disney Channel. Now, of course, uh, Girl Meets World is not as amazing because it didn't air on ABC Family, or Freeform as it's called now, but it's aired on Disney Channel, so there are some restrictions. Like, they can't talk about some stuff that they um, talk about in Boy Meets World, but it's still a very good follow-up with some of the main cast still in it. I really enjoyed it, and yeah, but uh, it's definitely not good enough to be on this list, but Boy Meets World is. So anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed moving on to my number six, and this will be the last part of our part one of our top ten list. Hope you all enjoy. See ya. Oh, hello everyone. I have to be a bit more quiet now for this one, but um, this is my number six, so... It's the only one where I had to allow you to just sit and watch the whole intro. Dexter. Because I really, 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 really like this show. Like a lot. And I'm sad that I can't put it higher on the list. The show Dexter revolves around a serial killer who only kills other killers because well I'm pretty sure it says in the first episode but growing up he saw his parents or he saw his mother get murdered in front of him he got adopted by a policeman who basically told him he saw what he was turning into and he told him I'll teach you how to get away with it but you gotta promise me one thing that you only kill people who deserve it. So he only kills other serial killers. That's like the thing about the show. But that's not what really drives this show. It's the relationships. And it goes from a person with no emotion to a person who truly cares. Which is really cool, I think. It goes from somebody who doesn't care at all to somebody who really, really cares. Now, I really 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 love this show and I wish this could be my number one because I really love the characters I love the stories but seasons one to four were solid they were great but as the seasons went on it got really bad not really bad I mean some people won't be able to deal but I loved Dexter so much that I sat through the highs and lows of the seasons, even if they weren't amazing. The show Dexter really dropped in quality after season four. And that's sad. There's a lot of up parts in later seasons, but there's a lot of down parts too. And it's so sad because I really wish I could put this higher. But because of the flaws in the later seasons, I have to put this in number six, and I can't put it higher. I really wish I could, but there's too many flaws in the later seasons to put this any higher. It truly is a great show, though, and I highly suggest you check out at least the first four seasons, because those are solid. And if you are a true, true fan, you'll stick through even its darkest moments. <laughs> Get it? Because it kills people, but its darkest moments are the parts that are stupid. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I really wish this could be number one, but I just can't have it because of the flaws in later seasons, like I said. It would have been my number one for sure, but unfortunately, the flaws keep it from getting any higher. But anyway, that was it for my top ten list of part one. Part two will be coming out tomorrow, but uh, I hope you look forward to that. This is already like an 18 minute video, so I had to keep, you know, them separate and put them into two parts, otherwise 
you have been sitting here for 40 minutes. So anyway, I hope you guys all enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. Go check out part two. I'll leave a link in the description when it's out. Um, and as always, love you guys. Thank you so much for watching my top ten. If you'd like to go see other top tens, please go check out McNeno. There's a, a there's a top ten least favorite games and a top ten favorite horror games. And yeah, hey, so much else to say, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.